is America heading towards a recession? The Dow's down more than a thousand points as that global sell-off intensifies. Overnight, Japan's Nikkei plunged 12%. That is its worst day since 1987. Global markets just had kind of a mini meltdown there for a second. So how is this going to affect the Canadian real estate market? Hi, my name is Adam Nadler. Thanks so much for tuning in yet again. If you haven't yet, please feel free to click the subscribe button right down below this video. And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button so this can be pushed out to more people like yourself. All right, so let's jump right in because things are a little bit shaky all over the world, especially with our neighbors to the south. And everybody here is curious about how this is going to affect our market in Canada and particularly for this channel, how it's gonna affect our real estate market. So let's dive right in first with exactly what the hell happened to get us jump started on what the carry trade is between Japan and the US. I'm gonna pull in one of my favorite YouTubers, Mark Moss, to explain it real quick. Let me show you how this carry trade works and why this matters. So here's how the carry, carry trade works. It's basically arbitrage. What this means is that in the US market, US treasuries, let's say that we can earn 5%. Okay, over here in Japan, as I just showed you, rates were zero. So let's say that in Japan, I could borrow for, let's say, 0.8%. So I go borrow money in Japan for 0.8%. I bring it over to the United States and I park it in treasuries and I make the difference, 5% minus 0.8. Or I put it into the U.S. stock market and let's say I put in the S&P 500, I put in the MAG 7s, I put in NVIDIA, and now I'm making 12, 15, 20% minus the 8. And so more and more money kept getting borrowed, selling the yen short, and it, all that money was finding its way into stronger markets, mostly into the United States and the stock market, into NVIDIA, into U.S. Treasuries. It's been great, but here's the problem. A lot of this money was put in there on margin. So that means that they would borrow $1,000 from here and they would take it over here and they would buy, let's say, $5,000 worth of stuff or maybe maybe more. It depends on what their credit is, maybe $10,000 worth of stuff. But the problem is, is this unwinds very quickly for two reasons. As long as this Japanese rate kept getting lower, 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 everything was great. Right? This debt kept getting cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. More money kept coming over, and these assets went higher, higher, higher. The problem is, the unexpected result, when Japan raised the rates. And only by raising them only 0.25%, this whole thing started to unwind. When these rates went up, all of a sudden, the interest that was owed went up. And when that happened, some of this had to start selling off to now pay for this. And as this started to sell off, the asset prices started to go down. As the asset prices to go down started to go down on stuff that was on margin, then the margins were called and they had to post more collateral. To post more collateral, they had to sell more. When they sold more, prices went down even more, which then means more margin calls. It means they had to sell more to post more collateral. And all the while they were selling this, creating this downward pressure, this was getting more and more expensive. And this whole thing started to wind down. Now, this was great for so long because for 20 years, they kept rates at zero. And they just continued to stay low and get lower, lower, lower. But again, the unexpected shift to try to shake off these short sellers put the entire market into a tailspin. So that's where we're at now. Okay, so now that we know what has happened and why we saw such a massive global market kind of mini meltdown there. How's this gonna affect our market here in Canada? Just a quick break before we get into the next part of this video. If you have any questions or you wanna just reach out to chat about real estate with me, feel free to use the first link in the description below. That'll connect you to a calendar where you can book a time to chat with me at a time that is most convenient for you. Or feel free to just send me a quick email to adam at visionrealestate.ca with any question that you have and I will get you a custom video response within 24 hours. All right, let's hop back in. As all of you already know, the interest rates is what has been suppressing our Canadian real estate market for the past couple of years and is continuing to do so now, especially with the rise of inventory that we've seen over the last year or so. But given the magnitude of what just happened, 
there is a lot of pressure for the Fed down south to cut interest rates and not by a little bit, but to do it by a significant amount. Now, why is that important for us here in Canada? Well, it's because we like to stay at somewhat of a parity with the US interest rate to maintain our exchange rate with the US dollar. Here's just a quick snapshot of what our divergence typically looks like from the US interest rates. As you can see, there are a couple of anomalies here, but overall we're generally at parity with them with a maximum of about a 1% divergence. Now, since this massive market tumble just happened recently, we are seeing that the market is actually betting on a 50 basis point decrease in the interest rate down south. Now, that is something that we should be expecting to see in September at the next announcement, but there were even talks of an emergency cut if the tumble continued. This is a big shift from what we were previously seeing, which was the likelihood of a 25 basis point decrease happening in September. Now it's basically a 50-50 shot that we'll see a 25 or 50 basis point decrease in the interest rate. The reason why this is so important for us is because that's gonna force our interest rates down even more aggressively than we were already pushing them. And you guys all know what that means. It means a hotter real estate market. People can now borrow money at cheaper and cheaper rates, making housing more affordable. It's probably a good bet to say that we will see the sales volume start to come up to and begin to outpace the inventory that's coming onto the market. Now, this is not gonna hit all asset classes at the same rate. Obviously, we have a way, way bigger bunch of condos for sale than we do freehold. So those are definitely gonna take more time. And if we actually look at the latest historical data that we have, we can already see the interest rates coming down already affecting our market. In July, for the first time in a very, very long time, I'm proud to say that sales volume was up year over year instead of down. Although we were only up 3.3% in year over year sales volume, this is definitely a good signal for our market. When we move over to price, we can see that things haven't moved at all. Both year over year and month over month, there was almost no difference in average price. But in July, here's where things get interesting. Total new listings were up year over year by 18.5%, which is still coming down as a percentage basis compared to what we have seen in previous months. But very interestingly, the sales to new listings ratio was only down by 5%, meaning that with interest rates starting to come down, more sales volume is starting to eat up the supply. Now, again, these are not big shifts, but when you look at it, relatively speaking, compared to what we've seen over the last year, these are signs that we are starting to see a bit more of a sideways moving market with a little bit of consumer confidence starting to peak up. So overall, are we seeing a very hot summer market? No, of course not. We're still seeing a very sluggish market compared to what we're normally used to in Toronto. However, I can finally say that for the first time in, I don't know, a year and a half, things are starting to look up for the Toronto real estate market. Yes, it's definitely gonna take some time to clear out a lot of the inventory that we have lying around, but prices are going to start increasing slowly as interest rates come down and people can borrow a little more comfortably. But hey, that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.